Hello and welcome to this week's episode of The Shooting Show. On this week's episode, we're back with some more row rut action. We're out with the air gunning show and we are joined by Jeff Garrod for some pigeon shooting in the adverse weather conditions. Let's hope he manages to build himself a decent bag. Right, well, we're back out on the pidge. Um, objective today is uh, we are on a bit of barley stubble, pulled up barley stubble, but we've got a, a, quite a bit of a flight coming over the motorway and we've got standing wheat behind us, which some of them are going into the wheat, some are dropping on the barley, but um, so we're, we're on the stubble here. Me, personally, it's because I can, I've got a free range of shooting uh, and also picking up, you know, I, I'm not keen on shooting stuff not to have a go at picking them up so hopefully whatever we shoot we can pick up today uh, preparations for the day is the other side of the field uh, there's a piece of game cover that's got some birds in so I uh, spoke to the keeper and he said he'd rather me shoot this end so we're here I'll put um, some bags through the, the little valley there uh, which would have been a good place um, to try and divert them as they come over the moat where they see them and they will swing down the side here um, and hopefully into the decoys. Uh, we came here uh, middle of the week, uh, had a go at them uh, when I'd done an article for the Sporting Gun, um, which was a good afternoon. Uh, so hopefully we can repeat it today. Up. Right, first pigeon, first kill. Pack up while we're 100%. Just go and put the one up. That's ruined the average. Gone from 100% to 50% in one and two pigeons.
すごい。Well, sat here on uh, Thursday because I've just come back from the game fair, um, which I thought was a very good afternoon or a couple of days. Um, I sat there and watched them, and it, it, it felt a little bit like the old days when they, when they were coming over the motorway in their ones and twos, um, which is a little bit like they're doing at the moment now. So um, let's hope we can get back to the old days and shoot a reasonable bag this afternoon. Got Jeff. We've only been here about 10 minutes and, and literally the wind, when we put the bags out it was blowing straight down the field but since we've been here well, I've just noticed those feathers out there it's just blown a bit more across the field now so I've just moved it. luckily we haven't got many deep seeds we haven't only been going a couple of minutes so just tweaked them a little bit and see what happens. Yeah, well, it's all right. I mean, it's a, uh, it's a. Uh, I mean, we're getting there. I've got a dozen, fifteen. I think it's about fifteen out there. Um, but it's just such a vast area of land that we're trying to cover. You know, it's got a big, sort of big wheat fields behind, big stubble fields here. So they're all over the place. We are catching a flight line here, um, and we are just beginning to get into decoy. So you know, it started off okay. Just got to see if it finishes okay. Yeah, well, it's, uh, it's a bit of a slowed up now. We've got rain coming in. Um, I didn't think it was going to be this heavy. We had a little bit to start, you know, just 10 minutes ago, and I thought, oh, that was it. But it's rolled in again now, so... Um, fortunately, the coat's on, and the pigeons have stopped now, so we've just got to wait for this to go over, and hopefully they'll start up again. But it doesn't look, you know, it doesn't look like we're going to have a lot, but it's raining.
they fly in the rain. There's something up. We'll just try and put a flapper up here now, just give a little bit of movement in the decoys. Unfortunately, the rain is still raining. Um, which is a shame really. I haven't really had a lot of luck in with the rain when it's been raining. I know some people do, sometimes they do decoy. Um, but I personally haven't had much luck. But we'll soldier on. We'll see what happens. I think the decoys are wet now, they just saw them and just really... How big a problem do you think now these wet decoys? Well, I mean, for, I'm, you can see, I can see now that there's balls of white, uh, water sitting on the back of their decoys and for me, that's always, uh, you know, pigeons, in my opinion, they can see that it's not a natural thing to happen. You never see a live pigeon with water on its back. Um, so uh, we're just going to sit here and, and hopefully it will ease up and pack up. And then we're going to have to go out there, shake all the decoys, try and get them a little bit drier, and then we'll see what it brings. But the forecast at the moment, as my phone says here, rain for the next hour. We're getting now, look, it's all, all the tail feathers, all got this bauble stand on it, bits, droplets of water on there, big bits here, you know. You don't never see that, you don't never see a pigeon sitting there with uh, water like that on its back. And I think when they're coming through, when they're coming low here, they can see that. All the, all the decoys now are covered with water, they're just seeing it just shine away. And there's not many, but the odd one or two that is coming through, just seeing that. So I'm just going to go around, shake them all off, um, and uh, we'll see what happens. If it carries on like this, then it will be. We'll pull the plug. Certainly don't see a flying pigeon with uh, water on its wings. I can't believe that. It's absolutely peeing down with rain out there. We just had one decoy. Well, yeah, I mean, it's four o'clock and it's, it really is raining now. It's been raining now for a good three quarters of an hour. At one stage we thought it was going to go over and clear up, but it, it does look like it's setting for the day now. Pigeons have stopped moving, um, although we have had the odd one that's come by. Um, but all the decoys are wet now. I'm getting soaking wet. Uh, and I think the next move now is to pack up. It's a great shame because we 
and I think we would have been on for a nice little afternoon, but you know, can't help the weather. What you get when it rains? Look at me cradles run over them when we truck. That's what they should look like, and that's what they look like now. <laughs> That's it, I'm getting in my truck, see if I can get a little bit drier than what I am at the moment. That's it, bring half the field in with me. Well, not the end to the day that I was anticipating. Um, forecast didn't say this at all, it just said we might get the odd light shower passing through. Um, this is a heavy one that stayed right above us. Uh, great shame really, because the birds were beginning to pick up. Um, not quite sure what we got in the end, 25, somewhere like that, maybe a bit more, got one or two more to pick up there, they might have made the 30 mark, um, and they begin to decoy really well, um, so, but the rain came, um, we stuck it out, but it just got too much really, and, and when, when you start, or when I start getting uncomfortable, wet, the gun's getting wet, cartridge, you get all your equipment's getting wet, that just really was time to pack up, so, um, hope you, uh, um, you guys that are watching this on the shooting show, get a little bit more enjoyment out of it, what I have in the last sort of hour or two. Um, but thanks for watching. Thanks, Jeff. And up next, we are joined by Thomas Nissen and his friend Jens as we head to Somerset, hopefully to get a prize buck within their sights. Somerset, and uh, I'm with my friend Jens Kirchner. We spotted a, a road deer for far distance, and now we get closer and see. We don't know if it's a buck or a roe, but I'll try and call and see if we can get it in. The, the wind is good, perfect, perfect. We are in Somerset with Anthony White and uh, my friend Jens Kær from Denmark. Jens he has never called an English roebuck. He has never shot an English roebuck. Uh, he has called roebucks in many countries around the, in Europe, but uh, this is the first time in England. Why didn't you shoot it? Nice, nice, uh, nice one-year-old book. Yeah, very nice. 
but uh, we will head on further out in the farmland here and see if we can get an older roebuck. He had a death wish, didn't he? <laughs> young, young buck. If, you, if the young, if the young buck comes, if the young buck comes, he will come. Yeah, he will come. Tell me a little about how you use the call and what yes. kind of call you use. Yes. I um, when I go calling, I always bring at least two calls. Yeah. And um, it's important uh, because sometimes one works better than another, but also if it gets wet, it doesn't work. So, um, oh, okay. yeah. so I always have two oh, or if three. You, if you get the saliva or yeah into yeah. it. Yeah. And um, I always try. Of course, the wind is the most important thing. The buck will always try to come around and and and, and pick up and catch your wind. Catch your wind, yeah. especially when you when you hunt in the, and call in the forest. They, they, it's like they always because they cannot see yeah. on the open field. It's more they like to come directly yeah. on your call. But but we saw with the young buck back here. Yeah, we saw it, that he came. Uh, anyway. He tried to come up and yeah. take the wind. And take it, yeah. So it's nice to place yourself up to a river, a, a, a open area, so you can see. If he's coming around from behind, yeah. and if you are, if I'm calling in the forest, I, I always try to be up high and have something an area where I can look behind. Yeah. So, um, of course, I missed. I have um, I've seen many bucks coming in from behind yeah. and around me. Yeah. Yeah. You have called yeah. in many countries, roebucks. Yeah. And yeah. Roebucks. It's the first time in in England in, here. Yeah. And uh, we are just in the middle of the of the rod. They, yeah. You could see it on what we saw today. Yeah. He jump on the on the, the buck, jump on the female. Yeah. So it's really it can be very difficult to call them in when there are so much in in the rod. Um, yeah. But and here in Somerset, it's a lot of hedges, fields, and yeah. you have a wind direction, but you only have some small gaps to get into the field. So you have to use another tactic, but. Yes, but yes. so far it worked well. Yeah, it works well, and uh, yeah. but we will have to try a little more. Yeah, yeah. Anthony, yeah. he's a little ahead, spotting for us. Yeah, uh, but I think he has seen some robot. He calls us ahead, so let's go. Yeah, yeah. Jens succeeds by calling the female away from the buck if she thinks it's the lamb that has fawn, if she thinks the fawn has some problems. But uh, 
not this time. Always. Oh, it's okay, it's okay. Yeah, yeah, I see. Just... Oh, I shake. <laughs> <laughs> but you've done it a lot of times. Many, many Thank times. You. Many, many times. But it's still exciting. Oh, I wouldn't come out otherwise. <laughs> no. I wouldn't get up at four o'clock in the morning if it wasn't exciting. <laughs> no. <laughs> Yeah, thank you. Well done, well done, well done. <laughs> that is a good bag. Yeah, yeah. Thanks yeah. him for the scope. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And he is quite excited about the size of the robot, so let's see. <laughs> you see, he's quickly. It's moving. It's moving quickly. Anthony, he is very excited to see the size of the buck. He's moving very fast. Of an old man to be, anyway, so. <laughs> ah, he's not that old. Let's see. Well done. Well done. Fun. Wow. That is a cracker. Look at the boy. Oh yeah. Look at the That's on that. That's very much metal class that is. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, shame. Oh, that, that's his yeah. character. Yeah. That's his character. That's his. <laughs> what? I think it was good. I didn't know it was so big. Yeah. <laughs> I did. <laughs> <laughs> The good thing is the, the, that the, he had his last go also. Yeah. Yeah, the jeans are... We saw it. So, so we took two out in the, um, in the, sp in the spring, Thank in April. Yes. And yeah. one where the Land Rovers are. Okay. Yeah. And one just the other side. Right. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, one just the other side. So it's, it's a very good area. Very that good one area. over there also looks good. Mm -hmm. looks good. Yeah. yeah it was but I'll have a good close look at him. He might be a keeper. Yeah, if you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you yeah. know, it, 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 he's high. Yeah, but he ain't, he ain't as thick no, as that. The, okay. He ain't as thick as that. I would say. Yeah. I'd have to take a closer look at it, but from first, first instinct, I would say he, he's. So, he needs to stay here throughout the rut. Then, anyway, let's put it that way. shot a very very nice buck but um, we just saw these two buck and a buck and a female and uh, I just try to call them in and see if I can but it's very difficult when they go together and they are so much in the in the rut so uh, they just look and then they continue running around after each other and but fantastic buck also this one for this hunt I've used a, a state rifle a blaster ultimate and um, okay. it's uh, mounted with a with a scope, a longbow. It's an old scope, ten years old, and an ATEC um, silencer. Um, and the caliber I used was uh, two four three with a soft point, and uh, it worked very well. And a shooting stick uh, in carbon from Blasa. We are hanging Jens's Roebuck in the cooler room here at Anthony's base. This is Anthony's son, Ed, and he's a part of the company which also have a venison, what do you, what do you call it, a venison branch? Venison products, yeah. Product, yeah. yeah. In Gamekeeper's Larder. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Can, because venison is a very important part of it's going basically, It's also. basically all about, really, to be honest. Um, 
supplying local venison to uh, customers from uh, restaurants, pubs, and all the public. Yeah. And uh, once they taste it, they they keep coming back. Sort of thing. That it's a, one of the healthiest meats you can get, all wild. And you're uh, selling it online. And uh, not, not online at the moment, but um, mainly uh, we do markets um, twice a month and pubs and restaurants and lo locally. So all, yeah. all local, local, the public. So. Uh, but maybe we can see some of your products. Yeah, we can. Because uh, of the season, obviously most of it's frozen at the moment. But um, yeah, we can uh, have a look. This is seeker loins, um, which is some of the best meat you can get. To be honest, it's uh, yeah. really good. The and seeker it's just ready for a few people. Like if a family wants yeah, and meat, they have it. It's yeah, just yeah. Like so small, small families, or yeah. or up to up to big large quantities for for restaurants and pubs. So yeah. uh, this is a. Uh, uh, seek a saddle, so uh, the loins on the bone, but uh, we've got some lovely, lovely fat which just melts in the mouth. It's a uh, very good, very co good quality meat. Uh, yeah. So we've got uh, entered in the Taste of the West. Taste of the West finals is uh, the rump, so the the end of the leg, basically. Yeah. The most tender bit, well, the tastiest bit of meat on on the seeker deer. So uh, we're in the finals with that. So. Uh, and you have won some awards? Uh, we've won gold medals for a lot of products, um, yeah. but the rump has got to the final, so uh, we'll wait till November to find out uh, if we are champions. So, okay, uh, nice. Yes. Yeah. And that was where the robot ended the day. <laughs> Jens, he didn't manage to call it in because he was with a female, but uh, we saw a lot of road here. And we had a really nice morning and a good stalking, and a magnificent robot was was killed by Jens. And it will also go into the stomach of some, maybe <laughs> me, a chunky guy like me. That would be nice. <laughs> See you next time. Next up, we're back with the Egg Honey Show and we're joined by Mark Ripley as he heads out with his trusty day state, hoping to get himself a few rabbits for the shooting show. Well, this evening I've come down to the dairy farm again. The farmers asked me to pop down and have a little look at one of the fields at the back of the farm, which has got a few rabbits on it, apparently. Well, what he actually said was, there's a load of rabbits down there, can you sort them out? Well, as anyone that knows a farmer well enough will tell you, when they say a load of rabbits, that usually means there's about three. But anyway, we're gonna have a little look anyway, just keep them happy and um, you never know, we might bump into a few other bits and pieces out this evening, but we've got about probably an hour, half an hour to an hour I suppose of daylight left. It's a lovely sunny evening. I was actually gonna come out this morning, but in fairness, I had a terrible hangover. Um, so I've come out this evening instead. But anyway, yeah, bit of nighttime shooting. We're gonna be using uh, the Day State uh, Delta Wolf and also the Pulsar C50, which is a night day scope. So it'll be interesting to see what that's like after dark on a few rabbits. So anyway, I hope you enjoy the episode. Let's go and see what we can find. So the actual area that I want to head for is up over the far side of this field but what I don't want to do is drive too close and spook any rabbits that might already be out feeding. So I'm going to park up in the corner of the field over here and then just walk the last few hundred yards and uh, see if we can find anything that might be out and about.
Well, that was a good start. Spotted a rabbit, sat by the fence there, and he was 46, 47 metres away. So um, I know this rifle pretty well, I know the drops, so I knew that it was just going to be on the first mill dot. So I just held over a little bit, and um, there's a little bit of a breeze coming across here as well, so I just gave it a tiny little bit just to allow for that breeze. And um, yeah, he just flopped up in the air and straight back down again, so one in the bag, excellent. These thermal images are a real game changer. It makes it so easy to pick rabbits and any any game out. And it also it's quite handy as well when you drop something to find it. Um, these are the Pulsar mergers from Scott Country. They're not a cheap bit of kit and probably a bit pricey for anyone just out with an air gun and just doing a bit of casual kind of pest control. Um, but I do a lot of fox control as well. And uh, for me, these are worth every penny. Right, let's go and uh, get comfy and uh, sit and wait for a few rabbits after dark. Well that looks really promising. I can see about 14, 15 rabbits down on the bottom corner of this field. Um, unfortunately, there's not any more a little bit closer along this hedgerow at the minute. I was hoping that I might be able to wait sort of down this corner of the field and pick a few out, or pick a few off I should say, as they came out of the hedge here. So um, probably what I'll do is I'll, I'll, either, I'll either walk down a little bit closer and see if I can stalk one or two just before dark and get a shot, or what I might do is I might just stay here, wait and see if anything else comes out down this end knock that over and then um, then walk down that far end after dark when I stand a better chance of being able to creep up on them. So I'll hang this one on the fence so that uh, Fox doesn't pick it up and I haven't got to carry it around. So what you do, if you want to do this, you take the rabbit's back leg and just between the tendon on the back of the leg there and the bone, you push your knife through and just cut down through the meat. And then what you do is you then take the other foot and push that through that gap like so and then pull it up so it's just past that, uh, that knee joint there and that then locks that like so. That's called hocking a rabbit and that makes it uh, firstly easy to carry but you can also like, hang it on the fence or something like that and it just stops uh, the fox um, scarpering off with it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave my bag here just so that it's one less thing to be carrying and uh, I'm going to put the uh, infrared illuminator on the scope so that um, again it's one less thing to carry and to, uh, to mess around fit him when I might be on the chance for a shot.
side. That's the second one down. And uh, again, just dropped to a headshot. He was probably about, uh, I think he was about 40, 45, 46 metres. So another quite a long stretch, but um, they were starting to get a little bit agitated and one or two of them had already run into the hedgerow. So uh, yeah, I just had to take the opportunity while it was there. And after that, the rest of them kind of uh, work their way into that corner or any that were still out were just that little bit too far. So I'm just going to wait here for a bit because they're not too spooked. So hopefully we'll get one or two more come out. And uh, if not, then uh, I'm going to walk down and see if I can uh, knock over another one or two just walking about. Well, nothing else has come out in the past sort of half hour or so that's within sort of sensible range but there's um there's probably still another dozen rabbits out or maybe a few less 10 10 12 rabbits out in the uh the far corner of the field there and just along the hedgerow a little bit to the right so i think i'm going to um i'm just going to crawl down a little bit further or sneak down a little bit further and uh and see if i can get a shot at, uh, at one of those it's nice and dark now so uh, there's no moon either so hopefully uh, yeah hopefully i can close the distance a little bit So it's a bit of a waiting game at the moment. I'm probably waiting probably 15, 20 minutes in between shots. Um, I'm just waiting for rabbits just to, to come out of that hedgerow there. They tend to sort of come out and sit right on the edge in the bramble and nettle and that, and I can't quite see them. I can see them in the thermal, but I'm struggling to see them in the scope. So uh, even though they're out, I'm having to wait probably another 10 minutes before they actually get bold enough to sort of hop out into the field a little bit. But um, I've had four so far, so I'm off to a sort of pretty good start.
Well, I've got to be honest, I've always been a bit of a fan of the uh, 0.22 for um, for rabbits with the air rifle, especially a sub 12 foot pound. But um, the more I use the 177, like this little day state, uh, the more I uh, actually think, you know what, it does a pretty good job on the rabbits. I mean, these are sort of quite quite a long range really for a 177, where you know sub 12 foot pound. They're kind of um, well, most of them have been sort of 45 to 50 meters, um, and yeah, it, with that pellet in the right place, it's been killing them cleanly. They've just been dropping stone dead. It's a very accurate little pellet, and I think just being that little bit flatter shooting. I know there's always been a bit of a, a debate with the uh, 22 or 177, but uh, well, I think this just proves a, a good case for the 177. Right, let's go and find the others. Well, I'll take that back, what I said about the farmer exaggerating the rabbit numbers. There's probably been 15, 20 bunnies out along this hedgerow. Um, I've managed to knock down seven this evening, or I've picked up seven, so uh, that's um, not a bad, bad inroad into the numbers. Obviously, I have to come back and give another couple of goes. But it hasn't been the uh, ideal conditions. I ideally want just a little bit of a breeze this evening. It's dead still. Uh, there's no wind at all, so um, every shot even though it's only a sub 12 foot pound air rifle and it's um it's it's moderated it's still uh it still sounds quite loud or even just the the impact on the rabbit is is enough and um it sent uh it sent the rest of the rabbits sort of scurrying in every time i managed to knock one down um but despite that yeah i've made the most of the opportunities we got so i'm pleased with that right work tomorrow so um i called it a night but thanks for watching Hope you enjoyed the episode. Sadly, that's all we've got time for on this week's episode of The Shooting Show. If you've liked what you've watched, make sure you like and subscribe. And if you're not a member of Basque, now's the time to join. My name's Chris Castle, and this has been The Shooting Show.